All right, it's official. Bubble has now released their new workflow UI to all applications and it's the new standard. So you're no longer able to go back to that old workflow view. So if you've been working on Bubble from before this change, this is gonna be a little bit of an adjustment. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the before and after, you know, what are those changes? I'm gonna share what I like and what I don't like and stick around until the end, especially if you're new here, because I'm gonna take you through some best practices and good habits to get into so that you can really make the most of all of these changes for your own development. All right, so let's talk about what's changed. Right now we're looking at the old workflow view. This gave you a big grid-like presentation of all of your workflow events, in other words, your triggers. So when a button is clicked, when the page is loaded, or a custom event, clicking on one of those boxes would then reveal any actions that you added uh, beneath it. Um, and on the left side, you have this panel where you can manage your folders, which essentially acted like filters for that right side view. Now you could customize um, some parts of the organization here by color coding. You could rename your events and your actions. Uh, you could of course search through everything with that search tool up at the top of the screen, but this was pretty much it. This was the view. There wasn't very much else that you could do in terms of configuring the layout of this presentation. All right, now this is the new workflow UI and I'm actually using the exact same page as before where we were in the old view. This is actually one of our demonstration pages in our fast track course where we show how to create search functionality uh, for tables and repeating groups, applying all sorts of filters and navigation through uh, you know, your various lists and things like that. So that's what's happening on this particular page. Now you can see that this workflow UI, it's more modern in design and uh, we have very different configuration for the events and actions. Everything's just kind of been shuffled around a bit. So I'm going to help you get reoriented here. If you're coming from the old view and that's what you're used to, it's gonna take an adjustment. Uh, but if you're new to this, if you're brand new to Bubble, this is all you know, I'm still gonna point out some important things to keep in mind. So we still have this concept of our left side panel and the right side canvas. The left side is gonna be where you manage all of your folders and the right side, uh, this is where the biggest changes have occurred in my opinion. You know, this used to be where that big grid of all of your workflow events lived. Now we're just looking at one workflow sequence at a time. So for example, my clear button here is clicked, you know, this is the event trigger and then I have all of the actions that follow it. And it's also organized in a vertical structure as opposed to horizontal like before. Now. All of the events have actually been moved to the left side. So we see them here organized within our folders and folders are gonna be really important to use. Uh, and if I wanted to switch over to a different workflow, I'll just select a different event like this. And it'll show me the sequence you know, that that event contains. Okay, now there's a lot more interactivity that's happening on both of these sides here, the panel and the canvas. So I'm gonna walk you through some of those so you can configure this screen to be as comfortable for you as possible. So the first thing is on the right side, you can zoom in and out on it. Uh, this plus and minus tool here in the lower left corner, I can click on it to go in and out. can also hold down my control key on my keyboard and move my mouse wheel to zoom in and out as well. Um, now, you notice with something like this, this particular sequence has many more actions than I can see in a single view. So I get this overview tool here in the lower right and I can actually click and drag on that uh, to move up and down. And if I zoom, it'll also reflect again where I'm at in the overall sequence. Okay. Another thing that you can do on the screen is that you can go into a compact mode. So in the upper right corner, if I switch to compact, now everything has been condensed so much that I can actually see everything in one view. Uh, that overview tool in the lower right actually went away. And with the width of all of these blocks, they've all expanded. So I can see more on a single line in terms of the names of things. So for example, this pages loaded event has a conditional expression and I can actually read it all in a single line, uh, which can be very helpful. And back in the default view with the longer expression, you'll see that it starts to expand the height of the block. So if you have enough of that happening on multiple actions, you're gonna be scrolling up and down a lot more. So the, the compact view can just help you see a little bit more at once. Now on the left-hand side, you can actually expand the width of that panel. And in fact, if you go to this kind of uh, more settings area here, switch over to the grid view, you can expand it even further. And I wanna show you this here. If I open up all of my folders, I can actually see all of my events in a very similar view that was closer to, uh, th this is closer to what the old workflow UI looked like, uh, you know, where you had that grid of all of your events. And of course, here they're organized by folder, so that part is different, but uh, you know, if this is a more comfortable view where you wanna see things uh, at the event level in a grid structure like before, then this is the closest you can get to that. Now, of course, the more you expand the left side, the 
more narrow the right side is going to be. At the moment, that right side doesn't actually need a lot of horizontal space. In the future, though, when Bubble brings in uh, and introduces looping and branching workflows, uh, this may look a little bit different. You know, you may need to actually have more of that horizontal space uh, so that you can see things branching off. Also notice that underneath the event names, you're going to see by default the number of actions. If you switch this to show conditions, then it'll change that so that it displays you know, a little bit of the conditional expression. Some of it may get cut off, uh, just like you see here. But if you hover over the event, uh, then you can actually see a preview with all of the info you need, the workflow name, the event type, um, and the full conditional expression. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back in just a little bit here. Now, speaking of naming things, you can rename everything just like before. So if I wanted to rename the overall workflow here, uh, maybe to help me keep apart these two page loaded events, I can click into this and relabel it. I can also double click here and relabel it. Um, actions are still being renamed in the property editor. So if I select the action, uh, I can edit the name up at the top. One difference compared to the old view is with the property editor at the event level, you used to be able to assign the folder and disable the workflow from just this one window. That's gone now. So what you need to do instead is drag and drop your workflows uh, within the left side panel, or you can select the move to folder menu here um, for more of a manual selection. So if I wanted uh, to select this RG example, it goes into that folder. If I wanna move it back to the uncategorized, just like this, it'll go back there. Um, and this is also where you can disable the workflow. And once you do, Bubble will add that red disabled tag to make it very visually clear that it is an inactive workflow. All right, I'm gonna take this back to my list view and pull this back in all the way here. So to start fresh with a new workflow, you'll click on this blue button at the top left, okay? And this will get you started in the uncategorized folder. You'll choose your event just like before. You'll get that same menu um, with all the workflow events, okay? And then you can add your actions again, just like before to start creating your sequence. And to create a new folder for that left-hand panel, you'll click on this icon right here and it'll ask you to give it a name. So let's say, you know, sign up actions or something like that. And uh, you'll see it in your list. And I can collapse these down all the way so I can see all of my folders just like that. You can also delete it by opening up this more menu, delete, confirm, and it's gone. Now, another thing you can do is actually organize all of your events, not by folder, but instead by event type. So for example, I have this event type for element is clicked with eight different workflows. And um, because I have several buttons that are all doing different things and they're all organized into different folders, but by grouping them this way, it gives me a different perspective um, to help me find stuff. So. Um, I personally prefer the folder view, but uh, I just think it's more useful, but know that this option is here. Now, speaking of searching for things in your workflows area, especially if you have a larger uh, page or reusable element with many, many workflow events and actions, the search tool at the top works just like before. So you can type in any keyword um, and it'll search the custom workflow names, the event types, the actions. Um, so if you type in a word here and then select it, it'll take you right to uh, that action within the event. Um, it'll open up the folder, um, it, whether, however it's organized on the left side, it'll take you right to it. So definitely make use of that search tool. It's going to be really helpful for you to jump around quickly, uh, especially if you have everything labeled properly. All right, so now that we have a better understanding on what Bubble's new normal is going to look like, I do wanna share my personal likes and dislikes uh, about these changes. I'm saying this as a regular Bubble user that is on this platform every single day. Some of my things may have no relevance to you know how you use Bubble. Uh, and I'm also saying this as uh, you know just understanding that things are gonna to continue to evolve. In fact, as I've been recording this video, Bubble has already released a couple of improvements in response to community feedback, which I find is a very positive sign here. So here's what I'm currently liking about these changes. The first thing is that I really, really appreciate being able to see trigger references for backend workflows and custom events. It makes troubleshooting those things a lot easier. I do like the ability to drag and drop workflow events into folders. I think overall, the suggestion that you, know, you have to have things organized into folders in order to stay oriented is a really good one. That's gonna be a really good habit to get into no matter what type of system you are working in, no matter what type of platform. I've already encountered some of our you know, clients or students 
who have not paid attention to the folder system before. And so now everything is in this uncategorized group and on large applications, you know, it makes it really hard to find stuff. So uh, forcing yourself to organize things into folders is, is a very good thing. And I do like this, that this design uh, encourages that even more. I also really like the way that uh, the disabled workflows are identified now. I think it's a lot more visually clear. Uh, before, you know, in the old view, there was a, sort of a fade out uh, effect that was applied to the workflow event block there. Uh, but this new system that shows that red tag, I just think it's a lot more clear. Another positive impression that these changes have had on me is that it honestly, it is making me excited about the future. Yes, there's a little bit of an adjustment period in terms of moving through the application. Is it perfect? No, I don't think so. I do think that some things have been slowed down um, in terms of productivity. I do think some aspects of the uh, previous version were better, which I'll get to in just a second here. But overall, I am excited about the groundwork that's being laid here for more advanced capabilities, such as looping and branching. So I try to remind myself that that's the direction that we're headed in, and we need to take these baby steps in order to get there. Now, here are a few things that I'm not a total fan of with these changes. I think the main thing is that we've sort of lost this big picture view of all of the workflows on the screen. We're, we're forced to only look at things one workflow at a time. I do think that there could be huge improvements made there. Um, I'm not saying that the old view was perfect with that either, but it was closer in my opinion because you always had that grid view, you know, that was sort of your default there. So I feel like we've lost that a little bit, um, which is a, a bit disorienting. If you're asking me for a wish list on what this could look like, I would actually say modeling after something like Parabola and their workflow interface um, I think would make so much more sense because you can see multiple workflows all at once and how they're connected to one another. Uh, not to mention they use this really cool card system where you can have things labeled in a description, uh, which can contribute to just like application wide documentation. This is a minor one. For some reason, I really don't like that I can't delete an event from the right side. I'm finding that I'm having to go back and forth between the left and right side. Uh, more than I really want to in order to uh, do very simple things. I, I do wish that I had kind of all of the actions available to me on the right side. It feels minor, but you know, you do it enough, you run into that enough and it kind of builds up on you and you kind of realize how much time you've actually spent just navigating the UI. Now, how can we make the most of these changes so that you're as efficient as possible in your development, right? How can we make this really work for you? There's three things here, and these were still true even in the old view. It's just that now it, it's even more important, okay? So the first is you must use folders. Get in the habit of always placing your workflows inside of a folder so that it is hyper-organized. It's going to make it so much easier for you to stay oriented uh, with your page workflows or your backend workflows. Uh, and especially if you're working with a team, it's going to make it really easy for other folks to find things quickly. Next are reusable elements. Definitely take advantage of these. These are custom built components. So you design and build out the workflows for the component once, and then you can reuse it across your app. It really helps keep things efficient by letting you update it in one place. And it helps you keep your workflows area cleaner, easier to manage, since all of the logic is tied to that one element and stays self-contained instead of cluttering all of your main pages. Custom events can help you branch your workflows into separate, you know, smaller independent flows. Custom events can be triggered by multiple other workflows. So they're sort of shared sequences, right? If button A is clicked or button B is clicked, they both can funnel into one single uh, flow. Again, that can cut down on errors because you have less to manage, right? You're not duplicating that sequence in two different places. Um, and overall, one single workflow isn't as big uh, because you're, you know, you're breaking them down, you're segmenting them. So these three things, folders, reusable elements, custom events, they're all about organizing all of your logic into smaller groupings that is much easier for you to navigate in the editor. So the consensus that I've been reading and even hearing about from our own clients and students and what I've been experiencing on a daily basis, just myself, is that yes, this is a huge change. Um, it is gonna require a lot of adapting to, and, and especially if you have a large application with you know, a lot of workflow activity. What I'm trying to remind myself here, and, and hopefully can remind you, is that this is the worst it will ever be. And I'm not even saying it's that bad. I actually like the new UI. Uh, is it perfect? No. Are there things that I wish worked differently? Absolutely. Uh, but it is the worst it'll ever be right now. It's going to continue to improve. It'll continue to evolve. You know, we've already seen that Bubble has been listening to the community feedback and implementing changes where it makes sense. And I 
want to remember that, you know, this is leading us somewhere better, that better capabilities are, you know, to come. Uh, so I'm going to be patient with it and I'm going to stick with it. I hope you will too. Now, a little bit of related business here before we go. You may have heard that we have a course that teaches you how to build an application on Bubble from start to finish. You go from a blank page all the way to launching your working application to your first group of beta users. We're very proud of it. It's our flagship course. It's been around for about eight years or so. Um, and every once in a while, we'll re-record everything so that it's all updated. You know, Bubble is constantly making improvements to the platform. We are currently re-recording it again uh, so that everything matches up with this new workflow UI. Now, in the meantime, we're offering a hundred dollars off of the course during this transition period. Um, so you're still able to enroll. It's just that all the workflow screens are going to be on that old UI. You will get access to the new updated lessons once they're ready. So you can see all the details about that discount and the course in general in the description below. All right. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, definitely take a look at the content you're about to see on the next screen. Um, if you're not really sure where to start, send us an email, team at coachingnocodeapps.com. You can reach out to us. We'll be happy to point you in the right direction. All right. See you in the next one.